Back in the late 1960s, my dad got a job as a librarian in the literature department of the San Francisco Public Library. He was assigned to select books for the library's poetry section, and it's there where Hiroshi Kashiwagi, Nisei poet, and the poet laureate of Tule Lake was born. In the preface to his 2010 book of poetry, Ocean Beach, he wrote, reading the poems by other writers gave me ideas for my own poems. What can I say about how poems are written? At first, it was tentative, and it's still tentative. One thing I know is one does not will a poem. It's best when it just happens. For nearly 50 years, he wrote and read his poetry at annual Japanese American Day of Remembrances, at churches and community events, and on special occasions where he would honor a couple at their wedding or a good friend on their birthday with a poem written and read just for them. His signature poem, A Meeting at Tule Lake, was written in April 1975 on the bus from San Francisco to the California-Oregon border, and he read it for the first time at the second Tule Lake pilgrimage. It's a poem he would read again and again at almost every pilgrimage since then, and my wife Keiko and I are happy to share this poem and so many of his others with you today. During these troubling times, our hope is my dad's poetry will let you pause and reflect on life as you take in his words. And we hope they bring you comfort, healing, and a sense of connection and community between yourself and all those around you. And now, please enjoy Poetry by Hiroshi Kashiwagi, as read to you by Keiko Kawashima, and yours truly. Tofu. Tofu, white blocks of bean cake. Good protein food, I know. Sure, I know. Two hours every day after school, I spent grinding soybeans into a frothy mess. Wash tub full for Papa's famous, fine textured, number one, three, four quarter tofu. Good for you, not for me. Too much of my boyhood went into good protein food. Now white folks, now vegetarians have discovered tofu. They eat it, praise it, even make it. Tofu, good for you, not for me. The goddamn tofu. Winter. I know I am there in the warm yellow glow of the kerosene lamp. Rice is steaming in the black china pot and I could smell the smoke from the wood stove, burning live oak. I am 10. It is winter. Iris. The purple iris I dug up from mother's garden bloomed again this year in our backyard. Owned or rented, we have no claim to the earth, but the iris, tall and straight, blooms year after year. A librarian looks at snails. Watching snails coupling, I wonder if he read books on sexuality. Go. Like new snow, so white and clean, dare I mar that perfection? What the hell? It's only a poem. This is an untitled poem. No Sunday school, but a walk on the beach. My son and I found a treasure, 
left by an earlier visitor. How right the boy with a small white feather on a Sunday morning. Meditation. Wind blows, water moves, hair bends, mind stirs, the moon is serene. Owls. Ubiquitous owls in the shops, bamboo, cloth, wood, ceramic, glass. Why are there so many owls? We asked a shopkeeper in Sumago. Owls are called fukuro, and since fuku means good fortune, owls bring good fortune. Everyone loves good fortune, don't you? We bought his easy answer, but not the owls. Tosh, standing there, large head, round shoulders, flat feet, dashed by the water. I wonder what a 12-year-old is thinking, looking out at the sea. Soji. An empty coffee can with two punctures for drainage holds potting soil and seeds of coleus, that wondrous plant of variegated leaves. Responsible for the planting, Soji at 12 himself growing like a willow, watches and waits until one morning an irrepressible whoop announces for us the joyous beginning. Cello. Mommy, when am I going to get a cello? He asked. And Mommy said, Oh, when you're eight years old. Oh, God damn it, he said and fell asleep. Home. I like the smell when I get off the bus, like the taste of octopus. Of course, it's the sea, and I know I'm home. Morning walk. A jogger with dogs, all greyhounds, passes me to my left. To my right, headlights speed by on the great highway. Tail lights in the far lane stall until the signal in the distance turns green and the taillights move again. The air is brisk in the morning, not too cold. I have on a wool shirt. The ocean is calm. A lone surfer rides the waves, but the moon is full. I see it for the first time and it was there all the time, silver, Majestic, immutable. A fellow walker comes by, going the other way. Our eyes meet and we nod, good morning. My two mile walk to Sloat and back is over and I'm good for another day. Nam Ami Dabutsu. On your wedding. Love, the meaning of, is forever. How the sun shines. Love, the meaning of, is forever. Grasses of Hiroshima. Are the grasses still growing in Hiroshima? Rivers flowing, 
mothers nursing the young, rice steaming in the kitchen. Ah, the smell of rice steaming. Hiroshima was my home on earth. I was 13, a schoolgirl on that August morning of darkness and death. Long ago, long ago. Are the grasses still growing in Hiroshima? Rivers flowing, mothers nursing the young, rice steaming in the kitchen? Hiroshima was my home on earth. Are the grasses still growing in Hiroshima? Tell me, tell me that the grasses are growing in Hiroshima. Note, I believe this is my poem. I hope it is. For Mother. Now that my hair is graying, we could sit by the window and chat if you like, or we could just sit quietly and serenely, two people with graying hair. Mortality. Hoshi is 14, nearing 15. I suppose that's old for a dog. I notice certain changes. She's more cautious and hesitant going down the stairs and her morning walks are more circumscribed. Only after a bath does she show any energy running around as she used to. I guess to shake the water off her coat. She doesn't always hear my calls, but her sight and smell are good and her appetite is healthy. Still, I watch her closely, thinking of mortality, hers and mine. Tule Lake Monuments. Castle Rock and Abalone Mountain and the dry lake bed where tules grow are timeless, immutable monuments that bear witness to our confinement. They know and remember for us the history of our sorrow. Remembers. The razor blade remembers Mr. Stevens, the druggist, across the street I watched him come in the morning, overcoat and hat, and leave at night after shaking the door. All day he dispensed drugs and soda, love, hate, shit, what's the difference? While the bus waited to take us to concentration camp, he sneered and wouldn't sell me the razor blade remembers. Dust storms. Dust storms, frequent, powerful, relentless. We endured. We survived. Our spirits, unyielding, ultimately triumphant. Haircut. Papa used to cut my hair rice bowl style, carving big ears for juicy spitball targets. Papa, you used to work your mouth in time to the hand clipper. You were a happy craftsman as long as I sat perfectly still. But if I so much as winced when you pulled my hair, you became impatient. You lost your craft. You pulled more hair. I suffered. The haircut suffered. When I cried, ouch, you even bopped me on the head. One bright Sunday morning, a shadow crossed the light. 
A tall Hakujin grinned down at us. Hello there. Mind if I take a picture for the Sacramento Bee? Anti-Japanese yellow journalism. Papa, you snatched the newspaper pinned around me, scattering hair in several directions. Get hell out, you roared. The tall Hakujin fled, the camera on a strap, bouncing on his back. You were agitated, of course. But Papa, that was the worst haircut you ever gave me. For two weeks, I had to wear a stocking cap in and out of the classroom. But Papa, it's the haircut I remember most. It's the haircut I most associate with you. A meeting at Tule Lake. The bus ride to Tule Lake in the night over dark highways, rain through the flatlands and snow beyond weed. Up, up to the roof of California was a movement back in time, back to years 1943, 44, and 45, when I was 19, 20, and 21. Being among you, sensing your youthfulness, hearing your strong voices, I search for reasons why I came after 30 some years. Tule Lake, Tule Lake. That was a name I dared not mention, spoken warily, always with hesitation, never voluntarily. But you have made it a common name again of a small sleepy town that it was before we came here. Before we were confined here. Before it became Tule Lake Relocation Center. Before it became Tule Lake Segregation Center. For disloyal Japanese Americans. Yes, it's right that we're here to see firsthand where 18,000 of us lived for three years or more. To see again the barbed wire fence, the guard towers, the MPs, the machine guns, bayonets and tanks, the barracks, the mess halls, the shower rooms, and latrines. Yes, it's right to feel the bitter cold of the severe winters, the warmth of the pot-bellied stoves and the dust storms. How can we forget the sand biting into our skin, filling our eyes and nose and mouth and ears, graying our hair in an instant? Yes, it's right to recall the directives of the War Relocation Authority, their threats and lies, the meetings, the strikes, the resistance. Arrests, stockades, violence, attacks, murder, derangement. Pain, grief, separation, departure, informers. Recriminations, disagreements, Loyalty, disloyalty, yes, yes. No, no. No, yes. Issei. Nisei. Kibei. These are words now, but they were lived here. There were deaths and births and lovemaking in the fire breaks with the warden's flashlight shining on you. Yes, and movies, socials, dances, sports, card games and religion, sewing classes, flower arrangement, doll making, wood carving, beauty behind barbed wires. Recreation was big. It was encouraged. Keep them occupied. Keep them sane for heaven's sake. But a Chronicle reporter observed, there are 18,000 mental patients living in confinement at Tule Lake. So it is right that I remember and tell it. I wish I could share the feeling I have now with the Issei and Nisei, they who lived here, they who do not speak of it, who pass it off as a good time experience. Whatever we did here, the commitments we made, loyal or disloyal, compliance or resistance, yes or no, it was right. Because the young people make it so. Because they seek the history, 
from those of us who lived it. So we must remember and tell it. We must acknowledge it and tell it. So we are here, the Abalone Mountain, the Castle Rock, the dry lake bed where tules still grow. But the barracks, where are the barracks? And where apartment 4005D? Home once long ago, sold, demolished, gone. Little remains except what's trapped in our heads far back somewhere. I'm glad I made this trip. Somehow I feel a meeting of youth, your youth, your energy, your enthusiasm, your sense of justice. With the youth that I was, idealistic, intense, angry. It's a happy meeting. It's even better that I could stand aside after 30 odd years and see it, this meeting, to meet, to share, to learn, to struggle, to continue. I sense an immense feeling of continuity with you. All of you. Yes, it's right. It's right. And I'm glad I came back to Tule Lake with you.